to join with you like this and it appears that Facebook had changed some of their uh, priorities and all that and uh, rearranged everything so I can't oh there you are I found the comments I don't know why Facebook does all that without consulting me first as well we got everything all messed right up now but God bless you Eugene and Karen and and Marie Comden from Jackson's Arm and Daphne and Scott from the hotter side of the cemetery <laughs> and Betty Keats from Peterview we appreciate you guys for tuning in for a time of worship together hallelujah oh no I can't anyway moments tonight father we thank you and lord we know we understand that your holy spirit is with us and lord where two or three are gathered together you are in the midst of them and lord we thank you for that thank you for each individual and thank you for each family that's represented tonight by those that are, are tuning in or that will tune in later on throughout the week father i pray you'll bless them father let uh, uh, some seed from something that we've sung or something that we've spoken about be planted in their hearts. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Put on a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. In page number 60, lift up your voice to God. Oh, magnify the Lord. What key were we? Bless you. Put on a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the spirit and with understanding. Oh, Oh, magnify the Lord. Put on a garment 
praise the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord? Praise Him for His mercy and praise Him for His love. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. You know, we don't have to be in a Sunday service to lift our hands and praise Him. We can do that right in our living room, amen, or, or wherever you may be tonight tuning into this. I, I, got to, I got to put it up there. But you know, you can lift up your hands and praise the Lord wherever you may be too. Now pray that you'll be encouraged to do that tonight as we sing this. Lift up your hands and praise Him for His mercy. Praise Him for the love that He's shown to you and your loved ones tonight. God bless you as we sing this. Why don't you lift up your hands? Why don't you lift up your hands? Pray that you'll feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and feel the unity. That's a big word that we need to focus on for the next little When we lay our head down to rest, we are blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a wonderful feeling knowing that God Almighty has blessed you. God bless you, Jesus. I am blessed. I am blessed.
Appreciate you. Page 62. Paid in. I am. And it reads on the page. By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. That's wonderful news tonight. Certainly good when you when you have something on layaway or you're paying something out for a while. And of course each month those payments have to be made. But when you get that final statement it says that it's paid in full. Yeah. It's a certainly certainly a good feeling to know that you're not bound by that contract anymore. But you've been made free by the final payment and the complete payment. Amen. And that's what the Lord Jesus had done for us when he paid that sin debt in our place. Hallelujah. God bless you as we sing this. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Free from sin. Sing this one, burn on, burn on, O fire of God, burn on. Till all my dross is burned away, prepare me for the testing day. O fire of God, burn on. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, I think that's what we need today is the, the fire of the Holy Spirit to help burn away the dross all the things that are in our life that is interfering, all the things that are not needed. And Father, we pray tonight that we will, it would help focus on you. Let your Holy Spirit do a work in us today that we need. And Father, we pray tonight for this service. Lord, we pray that the internet connection will, yes. will cooperate as we share the good news of Jesus. Father, we lay all these things at your feet today at the foot of the cross. In your precious name, amen.
lost you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll slow things down here a little bit and have a time of worship and focus in on Jesus. This song is called Holy and Anointed One. just says Jesus Jesus holy and anointed one Jesus Jesus risen and exalted one your name is like honey Jesus I love you I love you. I pray that you will enter in for a time of worship with us. Let's just concentrate on, on the name of Jesus.
share a little uh, message with you and then we'll get back time of worship again after amen well, I understand the internet is not the great tonight but hopefully it's holding up, en holding up enough that we can we can get through and a lot of people have said, and I've, I've seen for myself, that playing it back after the case, um, the connection seems to be a little bit better when it comes to that. And I'm going to turn that there and hopefully I'm going to strike my guitar and give me a stroke. So over the last little, little while, here in the online service, has not turned the reverb down. We've been talking about Hebrews 11 and the, the focus, focus your faith. We looked at the first couple of examples and how they portray faith that a person requires on a personal level for their living in faith even when there's no evidence of what God has promised. And for over a hundred years, Noah and his family continued on with what God had commanded him and his family to do. Now tonight, for a little while, I want to look at what we see in the example of Moses. And I'm not talking about Moses holding the Ten Commandments over the children of Israel, it's not Moses holding out his staff to part the water so they could cross on dry land. But I want us to observe Moses as he is battling something within himself. And as we uh, focus on our faith tonight, I want us to consider the choice of faith. We've seen the walk of faith in Enoch the worship of faith in Abel. We can see a choice of faith. Let's look at the passage together. Hebrews 11, verses 23 to 29. And by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. And by faith Moses, when he had become of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. And by faith he forsook Egypt, and not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he would destroy the firstborn. He passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempted to do so and we're drowned. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to live for you by faith. And Lord, we know that it's not always by what we see, but it is by what we know through you. And Lord, I pray as we look at this for just a little while, Lord, let your hand be upon us. Let your Holy Spirit do his work in our hearts tonight. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. 
In your name we pray. Amen and amen. The key point that I want that comes to my mind when reading this is the fact that he forsook Egypt. He turned away from Egypt and went back to what he knew, to his own heritage. In verse 24, it says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That, I find, is quite interesting to see and to take notice of. He is a man that was taken out of a family that were considered no more than a family of slaves. The Egyptians considered themselves to be higher class people, even a claim that they were gods on earth. And the Pharaoh demanded that all people should worship him. The Pharaoh at that time would have been considered Moses' grandfather since he was adopted into the Egyptian family. So for sure, as Moses Moses had everything that anybody could hope for in life. He had the best of everything and a great future in Egypt. But we also know from Scripture that he was aware of the fact that he was a Hebrew. And he was aware of their way of life and how they worshipped Jehovah and not the gods of Egypt. And that itself was Moses' true heritage. The God of the Hebrews was the God of Moses as well. Verse 24 also said, And it was when Moses became of age, he came to a point in life where he made his decision for himself based on his true heritage and the true God that was supposed he was supposed to serve. And Pharaoh's command to have all the children, the male children, destroyed. Moses forsook all that he had and went back to the one true God. You know, he had learned from his Hebrew family of how Jehovah was faithful to them in spite of them being slaves in Egypt. And no doubt he had learned about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And all of this had been planted deep into his heart, and finally the day, the day came for him to make that choice of faith for himself. I'm sure that there are a lot of people that can relate to this part of the story of Moses. There are so many times that an opportunity will present itself. And maybe a person will remember them. These are seeds that have been planted in your heart, just the same as Moses would remember his true heritage as a Hebrew, all the glory of Egypt could not hold Moses from what was in his heart. Let me repeat that. All the glory of Egypt could not hold Moses from what was in his heart. It's so amazing to see how much power and how much of a grip that the seed sown in the heart has compared to the worldly powers and riches. Are you there today? 
making it a personal question tonight. Are you remembering some time from when you were younger that God was a part of your life? And But for some reason, maybe it could have been something that you figured was out of your control, but maybe that relationship was left behind. Maybe the race to get more things in this life had taken priority over what Jesus had blessed you with. Maybe there was a time that you were listening to the wrong people, and even though they may have been trying their best, they probably had never had Jesus in their minds. Maybe today is your day. Maybe today is the day that you will make that decision to forsake Egypt. Forsake what the world would consider important. And you know, gaining a few possessions or having a position of high respect or authority, those are good things. But when those things become the priority and it causes Jesus to be left out of your life, then those things become an issue. You know, Moses was considered the greatest prophet that Israel ever had. Deuteronomy 34 and 10 tells us, But since then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. You know, as time went on, Moses did some amazing things for God with God in his life. And you know, it never started until his life was half over. But you know, it all started with that choice of faith. Would you be like that today? There from so long. Prayers that maybe you overheard being prayed about you and make that choice of faith today. Those prayers that you overheard and maybe those old hymns that take you back to a place that seems a lot more peaceful. All of those are for you. When Moses' parents made their choice of faith and hid Moses away in spite of what was commanded, they were thinking about Moses. They were acting in faith because they knew that God was to protect him and provide a wonderful life for him. I want you to consider that today. Jesus has so much planned for you and your family and he wants what's best for you today you know all is needed is a simple choice of faith and a simple prayer from the bottom of your heart I would love to pray that prayer with you Heavenly Father, Lord, we know that there is somebody thinking about a time some time ago when they served you, but something happened along the way. But Lord, they're remembering tonight all the peace that they had in their heart, those people praying for them, those old songs of the church that every time they hear reminds them of a time gone by. Father, we pray tonight that somebody will make that decision and choose faith in you once again. Just as Moses made that decision to turn away from all the things that
something etched in his heart more powerful. Lord, all they need to do is pray to you. Say, Father, I know that I need Jesus in my heart. I know that there is sin there. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. You come into my heart. And make me a new person. In Jesus' name. Amen. Something so simple, but yet so powerful. From the bottom of a, of a person's heart to Jesus. That it is Remembrance Day. And we want to make mention of that. We want to remember all of those that served and paid the sacrifice so that we could be free today. There's this song that we sing, We Will Remember. We will remember the works of your hand. We will stop and give you praise for great is thy faithfulness. We remember the one who paid the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary and gave us a spiritual freedom that we live by faith in him because we choose to. We chose to set aside the things of this world and think about the spiritual things and the things that are not always seen, but they're always a matter of the heart. Hallelujah. I think there was a couple of people that tuned in, and I, uh, I missed you there. God bless you, Heather. God bless you, Jason from, from Central, Jason Freak. I appreciate you, buddy. We will remember. Valleys will look back and 
Appreciate all of you tuning in, and I guess it looks like the internet is not really cooperating, but <laughs> hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we remember the works of your hands. And Lord, we remember those that have served and Lord, pay the ultimate sacrifice for us. And Father, we thank you. Lord, we pray a blessing upon their families. And let them know that we still remember. And Father, we thank you for a chance to share your word tonight. And I pray, Lord, that it be a blessing to someone. Good Lord willing and good internet connection willing, we'll see you in, uh, excuse me, in two weeks. We're still going every other Thursday. And uh, we're still keeping the map behind me up to date. So I put, uh, put all the pins in on, uh, on Newfoundland. So we got, um, it was kind of tedious, but I managed to do the best I could. So if you're... Uh, watching for the first time or whatever the case may be just uh, post in the comments where you're watching from and uh, we'll put a little peg on our map and uh, we'll see how how far uh, the gospel is being reached you know through all, all these circumstances there's still a positive side to it and we'll see how far that the gospel is being reached like this and we know that the gospel has to reach every every corner of, of the earth before he he comes Again, tonight, and uh, like we said now, we'll see you again uh, Thursday after next. Take care.